the price point versus the quality of what you're actually getting is the thing that I'm the most interested in kind of hearing everyone's opinions about. Hello and welcome back to Nicole's Needle Crafts. I'm Nicole and today I am going to talk about the Red Heart Granny Square yarn. It seems to have just come out and just kind of serendipitously I also have just learned how to crochet. I've been a knitter for about 20 years now and two weeks ago I picked up a hook and went to a class and learned how to crochet granny squares and subsequently granny hexagons. So I've kind of put that really basic rudimentary beginner knowledge to the test with this new yarn and I wanted to talk about it with all of you. So I went in to Walmart to get a few things, um, went to grab a couple of little notions, things that I, you know, drop under the couch and stuff and the couch cushions all the time. And I saw in the yarn section one single skein of the granny square yarn that Red Heart just came out of in exactly the one color scheme that I really liked. So I had no idea how much it cost, but I grabbed it and I bought it. And alongside it, I bought uh, some Red Heart, nope, not Red Heart, some Lion Brand Pound of Love. Um, and I just wanted to take a minute and compare them. Both are essentially like a value yarn made out of acrylic, but I paid pretty much the same price, like 11 something Canadian for the granny squares yarn and for the Pound of Love yarn. And I just wanna take a second and take them both out and kind of compare the size and the yardage because I think that's absolutely insane. Okay, so I've got Red Heart Pound of Love in this like off-white color um, for another project of mine. 100% premium acrylic, number four, medium weight. Uh, and this is a pound, it's a pound of yarn. 16 ounces, 454 grams, uh, 1,020 yards or 932 meters of a worsted weight 100% acrylic yarn. Cool. So I paid 11 something, like 11.50, let's say, for this. I'm very happy with that, about a thousand yards. This is the granny square yarn. And this is the colorway that I really liked the most. I really like the autumnal colors, so I was super happy that this was the one that I saw. Um, now this is again, 100% acrylic, worsted weight yarn, but this is 417 yards. So this is less than half of the other one. And it was pretty much the same price, like within 30 cents of the other one. And I don't understand why. Less than half the yardage of essentially the same product. Yes, this has cool different colors and is measured out to apparently make granny squares. I made my first granny square last week and I think I've made about 50 since then. I do not care if this does not line up perfectly because quite frankly, I think that that'll make the squares cute and unique and different. In fact, I'd prefer that it is slightly different. Um, now, if this is mathematically divvied up the way that I think it is, then that difference or imperfection is going to be on me and my tension and what I do with the yarn. I'm really excited about that. I like that. I'm going to go now because way too many people I feel like are staring at me, even though nobody's staring at me. You know, you know how that feels. Um, and I actually have a knitting class to go to. Well, it's actually a crochet class to go to. The same one that I learned how to crochet at last week. So I'm going to go to that, pick up my friend, go to that and I will uh, tune back in with you guys sometime within the next week. Hi, hello, welcome to my messy desk. All right, what do we do here? How do I do this? Okay, so first round with color one, chain four, join with a slip stitch to first. Cool, cool. Um, so I am really tempted to make a magic circle, but I'm not gonna do that. I am going to apparently chain four. Okay, I don't know what I'm doing. It's fine. Everything's fine. I have no idea if I did it right. In fact, I think I didn't, but I did what made sense to me and I'm pretty close to the color change. So I'm going to take that as a win and I'm going to go on to the next. Uh, I don't know what I'm doing. All right, so here's the deal. Um, I don't know how to read patterns, even the easiest pattern in crochet. So what I think it's telling me to do isn't making sense to me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rip this out and I'm going to do my own granny square according to my own pattern. I don't want this to seem like I'm like, oh yeah, I learned how to crochet and now I'm an expert. No, I have no clue what I'm doing. It, it worked pretty well. Um, this is my square. You can see that the red color kind of bled into the next row the most. 
um, and then this last color actually finished off almost perfectly. I will say I certainly don't believe that this ball of yarn, even if it makes 14 of those squares, I don't think it's really worth the almost $12 Canadian that I paid for it. So far I like the hexagon better than the square, however, the hexagon pattern that I use, which is basically like a two by two by two by two, so like two double crochet, two chain two, two double crochet, chain two. That's pretty much the entire pattern, just radiating outwards. Well, the colors don't really work with it. I might try scaling up a hook size or two and see if that makes a difference and do it again, just because I do prefer this yarn as a hexagon. Uh, but this is it so far, and you can very obviously see which edge is my, um, I guess, joining edge, because that's where all the color is leading to. That being said, I much prefer the hexagon to the square. All right, so now that I've made a few different squares slash hexagons with this yarn, I wanted to go over a few things um, that I think would be interesting to the greater community. The first thing I wanted to go over was the price. So I'm in Canada, these are all in Canadian dollars. I paid $11.67 for 417 yards um, of this yarn. That's a bit pricey in my opinion, especially for the quality of yarn that you get, which I'll talk about in a little bit. What that breaks down to is about $2.80 for 100 yards of this yarn. Uh, to compare that to Super Saver, which is what I believe this yarn feels like, uh, you would pay uh, $5.97 for 364 yards, which is about $1.64 per hundred yards. That is not quite half of what you're paying for the Granny Square yarn, but fairly close. That seems to be a very big difference, considering the only thing that's really different about these two yarns is the dyeing, is the color pattern. I did also want to compare this to the price of Super Saver Ombre, which changes colors um, into like a nice soft gradient. It's not a yarn that I've used, but it's a yarn that I've seen. I've felt it at the store. It again feels just like regular Super Saver. Uh, and that one also comes in at $11.67, but in this case we get a little bit more yardage at 482 yards, making this one $2.42 per hundred yards. So that one is comparable, but in my opinion, for a simple color gradient, still kind of ridiculous. Now, I know that you can kind of argue that with the Granny Square yarn, you know, they had to, you know, do math and do probably a bunch of experimental trials or something to see, like, how many people, you know, got proper Granny Squares that, that looked right or that pooled correctly but I don't think it's that much of a difference. And please, somebody do call me out if I'm wrong on this. Difficulty does not, to me, translate to be almost double the price of a regular Super Saver yarn. And similarly with the ombre, it, it just doesn't translate to me. Let me know your thoughts on that in the comments below. This, the price point versus the quality of what you're actually getting is the thing that I'm the most interested in kind of hearing everyone's opinions about. Equality is my biggest gripe with this yarn. Uh, it's really not bad like super saver has come a long way from you know even 10 years ago when i used it a lot more frequently it feels a lot better also do want to take note that a lot of people say that once you wash super saver yarn it does get a lot softer like you wash it and you stick it in the dryer and it softens up quite a bit that's amazing the thing for me is that i hated working with it I thought that it was very like scratchy and just unappealing to work with, especially for somebody who's like still getting used to crochet. It's good in the sense that like a regular ball of Super Saver would be cheap and therefore if you're new to crochet uh, or even knitting, um, you're not gonna like invest a ton of money into something that you might not stick with. But for somebody who knows that even if they don't like crochet, they're gonna use the yarn for knitting, to have a yarn that I just really don't like the feeling of it just doesn't economically make sense for me. I bought this yarn for kind of the fad of it to see if my beginner crochet skills translated to using a yarn like this, which I believe is one of its kind of first of its kind in the mainstream, you know, yarn you can buy at Walmart kind of market. Now, the thing that I wrote down here in my notes about quality was that I would actually potentially pay more per yard for a yarn that has a similar gimmick, for lack of a better word, a granny square yarn, I would pay more for a yarn that feels better. And what I mean by that is, rather than having a big skein that makes, you know, 
14 granny squares, which I'll also talk about the size of the squares in a second. I would rather be able to make like 10 squares, but the yarn is a better quality acrylic. That being said, I wanted to transition into square size. These squares are really large. I mean, maybe it's that I'm new to the crochet world and the granny square world, but these are really big to me. Like, that's my face. That's the size of my face. A minimum of six inches. Even the hexagons, which I much prefer the hexagons, just FYI. I think they're so much prettier. Are, are huge. They're really, really big, which is good in some senses and bad in other senses because it's good if you want to make something like a blanket, but it's not great if you want to make something daintier, if you want to make something that has more like, I don't know how to explain, but like maybe like moving parts, you know, having big swaths of granny square doesn't necessarily aid that. Um, so I'm not a huge fan of the fact that these are really, really big. I prefer a smaller granny square. I also prefer a granny square, and I think I said this earlier in the video, that is maybe like three rounds, I guess, rather than five. So the only other criticism I wanted to give um, on this yarn um, before giving my absolute final thoughts is the limited color range. I don't particularly love all of the decisions that they made. It seems like they kind of fell into two camps, um, kind of like the cottagecore country theme with uh, colors like this. And then the other half of the camp kind of seems like really bright colors, really reminded me of like those windbreakers from the 90s that were just in like the late 80s that were just like really bright random colors together. Lots of color blocking kind of thing. Just not my cup of tea. I definitely fall more on the side of liking like the country neutrals palette. Um, but the whole thing together, the whole color story of all 16 different yarns just didn't seem cohesive to me. It felt very split. That's just my take on it. Let me know what you think about the color story of this yarn in the comments below. That being said, my final thoughts here. I think this yarn is wonderful if you're somebody who is not bothered by the super saver feel. I know lots of people aren't. I just am. Wonderful to start off with, I think for a beginner. I only learned two weeks ago and I found it very, very easy to use. I think as long as you're not gonna be someone who's going to get totally obsessed with like the color changes being in just the right place, there's a lot that you could do with this yarn. Did try a few different hexagons with different hook sizes as well, um, starting with the recommended 5.5 millimeter and then going up to a six and then going up to a 6.5. And really, I think it is more so going to come down to the tension with which the individual likes to crochet. Again, if you're not going to be like super upset by something like that right there where the yellow is kind of into the center a little bit, then this is a great yarn for you, especially if you're somebody who hates weaving in ends. I personally don't mind weaving in ends, and I much prefer having the control of which colors and things I want to put together into my own color schemes. But if you're somebody who likes the color schemes available here and hates weaving in ends, it's going to be worth the trial and error for you to try out different hook sizes and different tensions to figure out, you know, how you can make your hexagons or your squares or whatever other, you know, plethora of shapes you want to make. That being said, I do want to try knitting with this yarn, and for that reason, I went and spent my money on another skein. We'll see if it works out. If it works out, there'll be a video about it. If it doesn't work out, there won't be. <laughs> that being said, if you want to see a video about knitting with the Granny Square yarn, please do like and subscribe. Let me know down in the comments below your thoughts on this yarn, and if you've maybe tried to either crochet or knit or do some other craft with it, let me know. I'd be very interested to hear from you. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next time. Bye. Someone just pulled in their car next to me and now I feel like I can't stop doing this video or else they're gonna think I'm up to something suspicious. I feel like they're staring at me, but I'm too afraid to look over. There's also a man vaping in his car over there who's like definitely staring at me. So I'm just gonna pretend that I'm like FaceTiming. So, okay, cool, the person next to me is gone.